Chapter 45 Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two-leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I have girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his Maker. Let the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What makest thou, or thy work? He hath no hand. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou, or to the woman? What hast thou brought forth? Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. I have made the earth, and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their host have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways, and he and she shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia, and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine, they shall come after thee, in chains they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else, there is no God. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed, and also confounded all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded world without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in the dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength, even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified, and shall glory. Cyrus referred to as an as the anointed and he says whose hand I have holden and this looks very very strange to some people but it's really very simple Cyrus is a, is a gentile king and he was called the anointed because he did something very similar he was a type and shadow of the savior who is more properly referred to as the anointed in that Cyrus, as king of Persia, eliminated state uh, slavery and allowed captive Judah to return to their promised land to worship in their rebuilt temple. And he did in a temporal sense what the Savior is going to do in a spiritual sense, to redeem captive Israel 
and let us worship according to the way we should. So in that sense, this is Isaiah saying he's an anointed one. And because he did that, he, he could be classified that way in that sense. Uh, talks about treasures uh, by an estimate of the things that are listed off that Cyrus actually got, just the gold by itself. Billions and billions of dollars worth of gold. Uh, you got to remember the purchasing power of a small amount of gold was extremely great in those days, about 20 times what silver was. And it's almost impossible to put it in terms of purchasing power today, but literally billions and billions of dollars. There's a phrase here saying the Lord creates evil. And uh, in one sense, the way Isaiah is meaning it, that's true. It isn't that the Lord creates the evil. The Lord creates the good. Disobedience to the good is the natural consequence, and evil is the natural consequence of that disobedience. So by creating the good, which then man refuses to follow, the natural consequence is the evil. Uh, part of the imagery of Isaiah. Um, it talks about heavens dropping down and the skies pouring out righteousness. Um, take a look in Psalms chapter 85 verse 11 and that will be a little bit of an explanation. Basically it's just the heavens as a creation of Heavenly Father can be used for signs and wonders and uh, can be a source of inspiration for us. Not the, not the sky or anything like that, but the heavens and inspiration from Heavenly Father. In chapter, in verse 12, it talks about the things that are the Lord's and the things that are man's. And most of the things that man thinks he has, uh, that he owns, uh, Isaiah reminds man here that uh, he didn't create them. God created them. The Lord created them. And they are his, and they are loaned to man for man's lifetime, which makes man a steward, not an owner. And it also sort of reminds you that if you steal something, you steal it from God, not your neighbor, not the person down the road. You steal it from God, and there were pretty heavy penalties for being that kind of way to God. In 15 to 25, we learn that the God of Israel is the Savior. The God of the Old Testament is the Savior. In verse 15, he is referred to as the Messiah. In verse 17, he's there to save Israel. In verse 18, he's the creator. In verse 21, he's, uh, he's just and mighty to save. In verses 21 and 22, there's no other name whereby men can be saved. In verse 23, as words are truth and righteousness, and every knee will bow and every tongue confess. You might want to read Romans chapter 14, verse 10, I think. 14 and 8, maybe. And uh, somewhere there and uh, read that. And in verse 24, he's the mediator for all of Israel. All of those names apply to the Savior. Now, there are some people who misunderstand this knee shall bow and every tongue confess thing, and that they think that when that happens, everybody will be happy and righteous and ready to be, quote, saved and go to heaven. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The reason that every knee will bow and tongue confess is most of that will be done uh, reluctantly because it will be so, not all of it, but most of it will be done reluctantly because the vast majority of people are not going to want to recognize that because it will be inconvenient because they will be sinners and enjoyed the sinning and were morally corrupt in some way, shape, or form. And uh, they were the thieves, they were the liars, they were the whatever. And they were not fully righteous. They were not doing the things they should. And they're going to, every knee shall bow in the presence of God and every tongue confess that his judgments are righteous and his knowledge and understanding of them and their motives and the things they did are righteous. And that the judgments and assignments of them to life are righteous. So that won't be something they will be thrilled to 